Good afternoon, students and parents. Hope you're doing well. We're going to be taking a deep dive into fractions. We're going to look at improper, equivalent, and mixed all at the same time. Now this is a relatively concrete example, so we're going to have a model that represents the fractions themselves. And we're going to look at how improper and mixed fractions can be equivalent. Even though they're, they're different numbers, they happen to be the same amount. So these are samples, kind of notes. There's a blank sheet of paper. Please follow along in that blank sheet of paper. And then on the opposite side of that sheet of paper is this example that you're seeing in the video. If you have any difficulties keeping up with the videos, just go ahead and pause the video for a moment and uh, come back to it after you've caught up. Okay, we had our example of our Hershey bar and how we can take a whole piece of something and divide it into equal parts. And when we divide something, it becomes smaller. So those parts that we divide into have to be of equal size. And we can determine what sizes we want. Now here are, let's say that here's our Hershey bars or sheet cakes. And we're going to divide these into fractions. So we first we have to, have to kind of pick a fraction. So let's say we're going to divide these into eights. That's an easy one to do. I'm going to show you how to divide these into eights. And then we're going to identify improper fractions. Okay. Uh, equivalent fractions. Remember, equivalent is this symbol. It means that they aren't exactly the same number. They look different, but they're the same amount. And then mixed numbers. We're going to define all three of these on this piece of paper. Okay. So let's start with um, a fraction. Let's divide these holes into fraction. These are, let's say these are sheet cakes and you go to um, a gathering and there's some three sheet cakes set out and they're all different flavors. Um, let's say this one, no one likes this one. Let's say this is a broccoli sheet cake and this is chocolate and this one is carrot cake. So um, an easy way to divide these into eights is to make these squares as equal as you can. I didn't do a very good job there, did I? This one kind of went off a little bit. Make these as equal as possible and then divide again this way. Or fractions can take all kinds of different shapes. They can be equivalent. So this model looks like this. Let me do it again with this model. But let me go this way uh, with it. Let's see, this way with it. Okay, so even though this looks different, this is still an eighth over here. Okay. Here's our unit fractions. We're going to be putting in our unit fractions. We covered that earlier last week. This is still an eighth. So just because they're divided a little bit differently, these two things are equivalent. Okay. This divided this way into eighth and this divided this way into eighth are the same. I prefer this way. So let's just make one more like that. And then we'll make our lines go or, is, or vertical that way. So with fractions, there's a lot of equivalence. Things that look different but are the same amount. And let's say we aren't going to use these. So stop the video if you need to to catch up. I just want you to remember that things can look different, but can be exactly the same. And um, um, one other thing to know, another equivalency, is let's say nobody eats a piece out of this cake because it's broccoli cake, and no one knows what broccoli cake is like, and they don't want to try it. Um, so this one stays whole. No one takes a piece out of this. So how many eighths, if we were to write a whole in, in fraction form, how many eighths would there be here that would represent this whole number? Okay, well, the denominator is going to stay the same because we aren't going to mix up different denominators and different kinds of fractions. That'll come later, probably in fifth grade. 
And if we count how many pieces in here, we find that we have eight pieces. So this is a, a very unique fraction. So I'm gonna, um, mm, where should I write that? I'm gonna write that down here. We'll put little quotation marks. Eight eighths is a whole fraction. Okay, and this whole fraction is um, equal to one. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna hold that in our head. Over here, let's say this is our chocolate cake. Everybody likes chocolate cake. Let's say someone likes the corner, so they eat that corner out of it. And they take this corner to their cousin. And then, you know, this one's a bigger piece with more frosting, so someone's gonna eat that. And uh, someone eats a piece out of here. So it doesn't matter how many pieces get taken out in where, this still becomes a fraction part of the whole. We don't have eight eighths anymore. We have one, two, three, four, we have four eighths. And this is carrot cake. And let's say everybody loves carrot cake. Kind of healthy for you, tastes good, it's nice and sweet, especially with that frosting. I like the carrot cake frosting the best. So let's say we take that part out and then someone eats these, okay, over here. So these are no longer holes now because they don't have eight eights anymore. They have pieces taken out of them, which we've shown by coloring them out. So this could be represented as both a mixed number and an improper fraction. I'm gonna do the mixed number first. And the mixed number, since this cake still has a hole left, instead of taking all that time to write a fraction, we're just gonna say one. Okay, right here. We're just gonna use that whole number. And then we're gonna to add to that these pieces, one, two, three, four, just four eighths. And then we're gonna to add to that the leftover from this cake, that's two eighths. Okay, if we add all these together, we're gonna to get one and six eighths. This is called a mixed number. This fraction here is called a proper fraction. Because it looks like most fractions should. It has a six, which is a smaller number on top, and the denominator on the bottom which stays consistent, okay? We're, we're dealing with eight, so that number is not gonna change. This is the number that changes because this tells us how many pieces and this number tells us how many divisions we've made. So we've made divisions of eight. We have a whole piece left. We're gonna call that one instead of eight eighths. And we're gonna look at what fraction parts we have over here and that's six eighths. So that's a mixed number and we prefer to have mixed numbers, okay? This would be correct. We prefer that. That's how we like to look at fractions. With a mixed number, we want a, a whole number and a proper fraction right here. Let's look at this improper fraction, okay? So I'm not gonna change my model. I'm not gonna change my model at all because mixed numbers and improper fractions are equivalent. Just like whole and eight eighths, whole fractions are equivalent. But in this case, I'm not gonna use this one side of this equivalency. I'm gonna use the eight eighths here. So I'm gonna take eight eighths, and I'm gonna add them to these parts. We got four eighths, and I'm gonna add them to two eighths. And now what do I have? I have eight, I can, I can add these two together. Eight and two is 10, plus four is 14 eighths. This is called an improper fraction. Do you notice we have a proper fraction here and an improper fraction here? The difference is this number is larger, the numerator is larger than the denominator. A whole fraction is about as far as we wanna go with a fraction, even this is equal to one. One and six eighths and 14 eighths, these are equivalent fractions. 
they equal the same amount. I change nothing over here, it's just the way I count it. If I count this as one whole, and then the fractions, I get a mixed number. If I count all the eights, and then the fraction, then I get this number. So these two numbers, 14 eighths, is equivalent to one and six eighths. And you can see that over here, that I didn't change my model, the amount stayed the same. We just wrote them down differently, and that's what makes them equivalent. Mostly for these types of fractions, we do not want improper fractions. This is a no-no, okay? We want to keep our denominator and our numerator. We want the denominator to stay the same, and we want our numerator to be smaller. Eight eighths is about as high as we go for whole fractions, and even this, we like to say this is equal to one. Anything beyond eight eighths is going to be called an improper fractions, and we want to change those improper fractions into mixed numbers. And I'll give you an exercise to do that.